what does it cost to build a chopper? For some of us that have been in the game for a long time, it can be a question that you don't want the answer to. But when you're just getting started, it might be the first question you've got in mind when you're trying to figure out whether or not you're ready to jump into this project. Luckily for you, I have done all the heavy lifting for you. I tallied up the receipts, went back to the bank records, and I will give you the full breakdown. Everything that went into building the bike that you have seen on this channel, what I spent, and what you might expect to spend on your first build. I'm Grease, you're watching Grease's Garage, and I'm gonna help you skip the struggle. Before we get going here, two quick disclaimers, which you will understand in just a moment. One, we are not including paint in today's breakdown. The reason for that is you could spend my entire budget just on paint alone, or you could go to a hardware store and get rattle cans and spend almost no money. And there's no accounting for what you personally are gonna choose to do, so we're gonna leave paint off the table. The second one, I'm going to assume that the small welding and fabrication things like mounting your oil tank, mounting your gas tank and sissy bar, that that you are gonna do those things. One, because it's your bike and you should be the one to do those things. And two, because the cost of labor on different parts of the country can vary so much that it's just not possible to give you an accurate breakdown. So with those two disclaimers out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first item. So let's start things off with everybody's favorite part and that is the hardtail. So what I'm gonna give you here is two different figures. One is what I paid and the second is what you might pay. Now the reason for that is not because I'm some fancy YouTuber, it is because you might choose to get a fancier model than I chose for my bike. So let's get into it. For the hardtail itself, I spent $300 on that tail shipped to my door and I welded it here in my garage with my frame jig. That being said, hardtails can range anywhere from 300, like the basic one that I have on this bike, all the way up to 700 or more for some of the fancier hardtails that have things like cast axle plates on them. I know a lot of people love the cast axle plate look, gives it that real factory type look. Those hardtails can be double the price. So for your hardtail, estimate between $300 and $700. For the install, on my bike, obviously that was free because I did it myself, but it is very, very common, even for people who do light fabrication on their own bikes, to have somebody else weld their hardtail. I would estimate, and this will vary based on where you're at in the country, but I would estimate about 500 bucks for have, to have somebody put that hardtail on for you. And that's for somebody to do a good job on it. Yes, I'm sure you can find your buddy can do it for 100 bucks in a case of beer, remember, this is an important thing. You really want this frame to track straight and you want those welds to be solid and secure. So find a competent person to do the welding and have them weld it up. So all in on the hardtail installed, $800 to $1,200. Next up, we're gonna talk about the tins, which in the case of this breakdown is going to be your gas tank, your rear fender, I'm assuming you're not running the front fender because it's a chopper, your oil tank, and also your sissy bar. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Grease, why is the sissy bar in with the tins? Because where else am I gonna put it? Just write the numbers down, okay? Let's start with the gas tank. My gas tank is a lowbrow king peanut tank and I paid 110 bucks for it. My rear fender also came from Lowbrow. It's their five inch wide flat fender. It's a very basic fender. But my God, have the prices of fenders gone up. Is anybody else feeling like a rear fender used to be like 50 to 70 bucks and now it's well over 100, even $200. It's really gone crazy lately. But I went back to the receipts and for that fender, I paid $104. As for my oil tank, now this is where you're gonna get a breakdown for me and then a breakdown for you. The reason being, I love the horseshoe oil tank on the soft tail. So I actually kept my stock horseshoe oil tank. So for me, my oil tank cost me zero zero dollars. For you, I actually went and checked Lowbrow and Throttle Addictions websites, and most oil tanks these days are going for around 200 to 300 dollars. They even go up into the 400s for your horseshoe oil tanks, which is why it was such a steal and such a no-brainer for me to keep the horseshoe oil tank that came on the Evo Big Twin. Last but not least, we've got the sissy bar. Now for my sissy bar, I made it out of stainless because I cannot stand this mild sissy bar deal. 
It is so expensive, so expensive, hundreds of dollars to have a sissy bar chromed. Why these are not made out of stainless, I will never understand. So obviously I couldn't buy one. I had to just buy some 9 16 stainless bar stock and I just bent that up and I made my sissy bar and it cost me $60. So all in for me on my tins and my sissy bar, $274. For your all in cost, if you were to buy all of these items brand new, I would estimate about $500 to $600. The reason for that, fenders have gone up, you can expect to spend 120 or more. Tanks have gone up, you would also expect to spend 120 or more. And sissy bars are around 100 bucks if you buy a stock sissy bar, plus two to $300 for an oil tank, that lands us in the five to $600 range. Next up, let's talk transmission and primary. As you guys have seen in my videos, I run an open belt primary. I bought that kit from BDL uh, through JP Cycles. I bought the eight millimeter kit with the one and a half inch belt. I think it's the best looking one that they make. And I bought that for the 79 to 84 shovel head kickstart only. What that kickstart only means is there's no teeth around the outside of the hub that would grab on the starter. Uh, I don't have an electric starter, it would make no sense to have those teeth on it, and it would just look kind of unfinished. So I bought the kick only version for the late model shovel head. Uh, a lot of you guys ask about what kit is the right kit for your bike. The best advice I can give you is go off your transmission, don't go off the motor. Next up, in addition to that, you will also need, if you're going open primary, you will need the support bracket. It's made by American Prime Manufacturing. They have this on all the major parts websites, so get it anywhere you choose to get it. And this basically takes up the space behind your clutch basket where your primary used to go. $40 piece, add that to the tally. In addition to that, I was not a fan of the pressure plate that comes on the shovel head. Um, it's just really thin pot metal. It's really wonky, never really seemed like it was getting good even pressure. So I got on Lowbrow site, apologies, I can't remember who makes it, but uh, it's the only one they have on the Lowbrow website. Just go there. It's a, a, a machined aluminum pressure plate. It was also 40 bucks. So we add that to the tally. And then last but not least, this last part I got on eBay, it's from Paco and it is their adjustable transmission plate. This is key. I highly, highly recommend you get one of these if you're gonna run an open belt. And the reason being, it makes it very easy to adjust the tension on your primary belt. Video on that is in the works, by the way. I had somebody write in and ask me about adjusting that. So I have a whole video coming on it in the future, but needless to say, you will need that Paco transmission plate if you're going to adjust it easily. So for the transmission and primary section, all in for me, 490 bucks. If you were going to recreate this setup today, one unfortunate bit of news I have to share with you is that BDL kit that I bought for $330, it's probably around $550 now. I don't know what happened. It must have been a rubber shortage somewhere in the country. Uh, the price of those kits has just gone through the roof. So unfortunate, but I really still do recommend that you get the BDL kit. It was plug and play. As bolt-on as bolt-on can be, I put it on there. It came with all the parts I needed. It was so easy to work with. If you get them all at swap meets and you gotta just hope that all the drive ratios play right together, I didn't wanna fuss with any of that. So BDL kit, the, the uh, pressure plate, the support bracket, and that adjustable transmission plate. You are off to the races. Next up, let's talk about electrical because there is not a ton to talk about on my bike. On my bike, I bought a $50 triangle headlight, a $30 cat's eye tail light. I used about $30 worth of wire. My battery is a $25 battery that I believe I got off Amazon. If that is the case, I will put an affiliate link in the description to that item so you can buy the same one. And then last but not least, I got points. This was a $50 kit. I also purchased this on Amazon. I'll put the link to that down below if you wanna pick one up. So all in for me on the electrical, 185 bucks. None of these items, finally, we get a category like this, none of these items have changed very much in price, uh, maybe 10 or $20 different here and there, 
but I would expect you to pay the same, about $185 to $200 if you're going with a very simple setup like I am. One quick note though about that battery, that $25 battery, that is for kick only riders only. That was the weirdest way to say that. But if you're using an electric starter, you cannot use that battery. You would have to buy an anti-gravity battery if you wanted to get a small one, and those are very pricey. Instead of 185 bucks now, you're talking 200 just for the battery. So you, let's give you the range of 200 to $400, depending on your battery choice. Next up, we have wheels, tires, and tubes. Now, I bought this bike as a fat boy, which has disgusting wheels on it. It's because that's what was available at the time and the price on the bike was right. So I had to replace both of those wheels. Many of you would just go to a swap meet, you would get wheels there. For some reason, I'm very anxious about using used wheels. I like to get my wheels new. I like to know that they're true and that they're ready for the road. So I bought both of my rims from Lowbrow for both of the spoked chrome rims I paid 320 total, so 160 each. That math really shouldn't have been that hard. For the tires, I run Shinkos. I actually love Shinko tires. I had Cokers on this bike before, famously. The worst experience with a tire I've ever had in my life. It was horrible, could not be true, had to rip them off and go with a different tire. So I have Shinko Super Classics on the front and on the rear. You almost can't tell which part of the bike is facing forward sometimes because you got five by 16s on both ends. Now, the Shinkos are very affordable tires, but they're good performing tires. For both tires, I paid $224, so 112 bucks each. Now we're getting the math right. The tubes. This is another point of contention I have. I don't know why tubes are so expensive. I swear tubes used to be like $10, but now tubes are like $16 to $20, uh, depending on the tubes you get. I think I got Bike Master tubes, if I remember correctly. I paid $32 for the pair. So all in on the wheels, we're talking $576 for me. If your bike already came with the rims you want, this is gonna be a lot less for you. You might not have to buy tubes, tires, or rims at all. So for you, this could be all the way from zero up to the same amount that I paid, five to $600. Next up, we're talking seats. Now, I need to take a minute just to show this seat off because I feel like I haven't shown it very much on the channel, not as a standalone piece like you're seeing it right now. This is just a beautiful, tuck and roll seat. Uh, unfortunately for anyone who's seeing this seat and liking it, we'll go ahead and put it aside now. That is a custom seat pan that I made here in my garage and my younger brother did the upholstery on it for me. So this seat was actually a freebie, if you will. Uh, now, as far as seats go, they are, for a seat like that, I would expect to pay Probably four to six hundred dollars is uh, the going rate for a decent seat like that. I see companies even selling solo seats for four hundred dollars. The price of seats has gone way through the roof. Are you getting the theme here? Everything seems to be a little more expensive than it used to be. But for your seat, I would say three hundred to six hundred dollars. Next up, we've got the drivetrain. So when I converted from an Evo soft tail over to the Evo stiff tail that I have now, I had to go from a belt final drive to a chain final drive. So I had to buy a chain, which I believe I got on Lowbrow's website for 80 bucks. And also I had to buy a sprocket. Um, I bought a 48 tooth flat sprocket, in case anybody's wondering, and I did not have to shim it out. It actually lined up perfectly in this hardtail, so that process was really easy for me. 80 bucks for the chain, 80 bucks for the sprocket, so when we're talking drivetrain for that chain conversion, $160. If you were doing this today, and you were keeping your stock five-speed transmission, you would need to buy a front sprocket for the chain conversion as well. Those are about a hundred bucks, so let's say for you, 160 to 260 for your chain conversion. Next up, let's talk about controls. On my bike, as you know, I have no levers on the handlebars whatsoever. I've just got a throttle cable running up there and a set of handlebars. Now the handlebars I paid a hundred bucks for, those are still about the same, so a hundred bucks for a set of bars is still the going rate. For the caliper, there is no caliper in the front. 
as it should be. In the rear, I used the caliper from a Dyna, I believe. I ordered it on eBay. It's a Harley caliper, and it was 50 bucks. That was actually a really good price. I've seen them as high as 100 bucks. I would look around, though, if you're patient, and certainly at a swap meet, you could find a good Harley caliper for 50 bucks. And last but not least in this category, we've got your foot controls. Now, I like the foot clutch jockey shift setup I have on here. I actually built that myself. So again, that was a freebie. That was something I made out of uh, stainless steel rod, uh, some threaded rod, and then I made the clutch pedal out of an old ratchet that I had laying around in the shop. So I didn't have to spend any money on that clutch pedal and the brake pedal I actually retained my factory pedal, though I did modify it. I did cut it back and, and change the angle and re-weld it on there, but I did not have to spend any money on that either, so my foot controls were a total freebie. For you, I would expect to pay 200 to $300 if you are buying a set of foot controls from a manufacturer. So all in for the controls for you, $350 to $450. Next up, let's talk about the front forks. Now, most people will probably want to put extended tubes in there, six overs are very popular, but if I can just pitch this to you, I think it is time for a change. Obviously, if you saw my video on this bike, I did a two under front fork, and I love that low, chunky front end, and I think the chopper culture needs more of it. I get it, we have seen the six over, it's cool, but every single bike at every single chopper show is a six over front end, we get it. It's time to do something different. So if you love the way this one looks, give it a shot on your bike. Try that low chunky front fork out and see if you don't like the way it rides a lot better. As far as the cost is concerned, it's about the same no matter which one you're doing. I paid $115 for the lowering kit. That is around what you would pay for a, uh, an extended front fork. So I would say $100 to $200 for your front forks. If you decide to do narrow triple trees, now you're talking big money. Uh, you're talking three to 500 bucks for a set of the Mullins are really popular. Um, don't quote me on the price on the Mullins, I haven't checked that lately, but easily $300 for narrower trees, one to 200 for the forks themselves. So that puts you in the range of four to $600. We are getting to the end here, guys. We only got two more categories. Next up is the carburetor. Now, the carburetor I have on this bike is an SNS Super E. It came on the bike, so I didn't have to buy one. And let's be generous to the budget here, and let's just assume you're keeping your carburetor, just like I kept my carburetor, but maybe you wanna put a cooler air cleaner on it. 100 bucks is what the going rate is for most of the aftermarket air cleaners I see out there. So budget in an extra 100 bucks to jazz up your air cleaner a little bit. And last but not least, plumbing. So for oil lines, I paid 20 bucks for enough oil line to run all of the lines on my bike. And for my rear brake, I actually had to make a new brake line and I had to take that to a hydraulic shop in town. They charged me 60 bucks to make that. So for the plumbing side of things, let's just throw another 100 bucks on there for the budget to take care of all your plumbing needs. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations, because it's time for the big reveal. What did it cost me in parts to build the motorcycle you see on this channel? And the answer is $2,541. That's what all of these parts roll together to come out to. To me, that was a seriously budget-minded build. I know everybody has a different line on this, but spending that much over the course of time, by the way, it's not like you plunk down all 2,500 right off the get-go, but over the course of time, even spending that much, I personally felt like that was a lot of money and I had done everything I could to save by building things myself or by retaining factory parts where I could. Once you roll in the cost of the bike itself, which two or three years ago I paid 3,500 for. This was for a running, riding Evo Fat Boy. Paid 3,500 bucks for the bike, 2,541 for the parts, which puts us at $6,041 all in. And like I said, that is a budget-minded all-in. So when you're talking to people about what does it cost to build a chopper, that's what it costs to build my chopper. For yours, if you're 
buying a lot more parts than I was buying, or if you're just buying fancier parts or more expensive versions of the things I'm buying, you could very, very easily expect to spend seven to $10,000 over the course of time on your first chopper. If you want more specific details on how to build your first chopper, make sure you check out this video right here where I'll take you through the four simple steps of chopper building so that you can expedite the process and get that build done in a faster turnaround time. And make sure you click the link down below. You can get that whole video in a PDF guide for free by clicking that link, enter your email, and I will send you a copy myself. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you guys next week.